I think it was opportunistic. I think it was in a moment of high rage. Information no one had except the person who must have put that knife inside of her. He had 45 bullets in his body. The intent was clearly to kill those officers and those first responders. The reason we've been so successful with the police is because we target on the prolific offenders. And it's a matter of building a mountain of evidence. He is a man who will never again walk the streets of this city or any community. Hello, I'm Dan Satterberg, and welcome to The Prosecutor's Post. In this program, we take a closer look at the issues impacting criminal justice in our community. We also introduce you to some of the men and women who work for justice every day. Today, we're delighted to have King County Sheriff Sue Rahr. Sue, welcome. Thank you. You know, I'm interested in the career path that you took, coming from uh, a family of six brothers mm -hmm. to becoming the sheriff of King County. Well, I, ha I hate to disappoint you, but it wasn't a very exciting path. I actually had a pretty middle American upbringing. Um, grew up in King County, went to public schools, and uh, when I went to college, I wasn't sure what I wanted to be when I grew up. When I finally decided that I wanted to be a prosecutor when I grew up, uh, my next challenge was how am I going to make money for law school? And that's really what led me into law enforcement. So something about criminal justice appealed to you? Yes, I, I was interested in, in humans, human behavior, and the, the challenge of making sure that, that people are being fair with one another. And when you decided to go and become a police officer, how, how many other women were in the academy with you? You know, there was actually three in the academy when I went through. There was, we were in the first dozen women, not our specific class. But during those couple of years, that was the first wave of women being hired as regular patrol officers. There had been women in law enforcement, but they were in a special bureau. Do you remember the first shift that you ever worked when you were a rookie? Well, I do remember my first day when I showed up for work at the precinct, and I was 22 years old, walked up to the counter, and I announced that I was here, and I wanted to know, where is the women's locker room? And the woman behind the counter burst out laughing, <laughs> and she yelled behind her shoulder, did they get that janitor's closet cleaned out yet? My first locker room, I had to walk through the men's locker room back to the back to change into my uniform. So we've come a long way since then. <laughs> now, what kind of assignments did you have as a rookie? Where did you patrol? Um, I started out in southeast King County, um, the area that people know as Renton Highlands, Factoria. Um, uh, we called it the Frank 1 and the Frank 2 district. It was pretty comfortable for me because I'd grown up in that area. Huh. Did you ever arrest anybody that you went to school with? Um, yes, actually, I, I uh, picked up the younger brother of one of my high school friends at a, an outdoor drinking party. And he wanted to know, how did you find us? <laughs> <laughs> I never told him. <laughs> so today's rookie cops, how, do they, how are they different from when you were a rookie? Um, the, new, the new cops we're hiring today are much more tech savvy. Um, one of the most important things about being an effective police officer is being able to manage information bringing a lot of information in, analyzing it, and figuring out what the bad guys are doing. The cops that we're hiring today have such a, an array of electronic tools and knowledge. I think they're much better at managing that. Now, when you meet somebody at a party and you're not wearing your uniform and you, they ask you, what do you do? You say, I'm the sheriff. What kind of questions do you get? Um, I have to tell you the most common question I get is, are you back in heat? <laughs> and that's usually the men want to know if I'm carrying a gun. The women typically ask me, do you ride all by yourself in a car? So even 30 years after being in law enforcement, there still is a bit of a novelty of being a female officer. Although in your department, you, you have a lot of women who are in, in um, supervisory positions, don't you? We do. I think, um, I don't know specifically across the country, but certainly in the Northwest, we have by far the largest percentage of women in command positions as well as supervisory commission positions. So what were the best parts of being a deputy sheriff on the street? Um, there were several things that I really enjoyed. I think the thing that first struck me is the feeling of independence you have. You're presented, you know, every hour or two with a problem. It's always a human being problem. And it's up to you to be creative and figure out how to solve that. And I loved being by myself in a car making the decisions about how are we going to fix this problem. It was also very satisfying when I was able to help somebody fix a problem. What's the worst part? The worst part is, is, the, is the other side of that, and that is I learned about all of the horrible, tragic things that happen 
outside of public view. Um, I, I had a pretty sheltered upbringing, and the first couple of years in law enforcement were a real eye-opener for me. And I had no idea that human beings did some of those things to one another. I didn't realize how many people lived in such deplorable conditions. Drug abuse, alcoholism? Dr that, um, child abuse, sexual abuse, um, just the, the number of people that I came in contact with that lived their life in just a hopeless state. That, that was really surprising to me. Have we made any progress over the last 25 or 30 years? Well, there's a couple areas that we've made tremendous progress in. Uh, domestic violence and uh, sexual assault advocacy are two areas that it is night and day. Um, I remember early on domestic violence cases, we were told, just get them separated from the night for the night. You know, she probably did something to cause this. 30 years later, we have a completely different view. There are entire advocacy programs set up to support victims and ensure a successful prosecution. The same thing with sexual assault. The devastation that that causes for the victim is, is so enormous that we're now much better at intervening early with counseling and support so that that victim isn't traumatized for a lifetime. And we've built up some support systems for both of those Absolutely, areas. absolutely, and we work cooperatively together. That's the most important component, in my opinion. So there's some progress. What are yeah. the challenges that are remain out there for law enforcement? Well, um, in those arenas, I think we're on the right track. It's just a matter of we have probably another generation before we make a more significant dent. My understanding is in the ar arena of sexual assault, we've dramatically reduced the number of those cases, but there's still too many out there. Um, in terms of bigger picture, we have a huge challenge with um, the internet, cyber crimes. These are crimes that are very, very challenging, as you know, to investigate and to prosecute because they don't just cross local jurisdictional lines, they cross international boundaries. And we need to figure out how we are going to get on top of that type of crime. What about violent crime? What kind of, what are the things that, that your officers encounter every day that are, mm -hmm. that are most frightening? Well, I think the youth violence is the most disturbing and it's the most insidious right now. I am very proud that we're doing some very innovative things to try and get a grip on that. We have our Police Activities League, which is, we have gotten a tremendous amount of grant money to do very one-on-one -on -one intervention and mentoring with some of the toughest kids. Uh, we have a program right now that is we're working with Tina Hendricks, Jimi Hendricks' niece. Now, you being the music guy, I'm sure yeah, you would Jimmy be Hendricks. interested in, in learning more. But she has a music academy. She has five young men in this music academy. Three of the five have been shot within the last year. So these are kids that are in tough, tough circumstances. But what we've learned over the years is it's good to have big activities for lots of kids but there are some kids that you have to save them one at a time. And that's what we're learning, is how to put together programs that put a mentor together with a young person. And I'm really optimistic that that's gonna be a more successful approach. Try to find a creative outlet, a little hope yes. in their life. That's the key, Dan, is it's the hope piece, because some of these kids don't, they have no hope, they see no future for themselves. And for some of these young men, this is the first time they have a glimmer that there's something else for me besides you know, fighting to save my life or, or, or make a buck on the street. Seeing this kind of human misery every day mm -hmm. can be kind of tough on a cop. A lot of people probably uh, burn out on that career. How have you managed to stay excited about law enforcement all these years? Well, I think uh, for me personally, it's having a very strong family. Um, at the end of the day, I go home, and no matter how bad of what I've seen during the day, I come home and it completely re-energizes me. I'm so grateful for what I have, and it, uh, w as I was raising my kids, it really uh, motivated me to make sure that my kids were you know, staying on track, getting the support they needed. And I have to constantly remind myself that what I see every day um, is not reality for everyone, and I have to force myself to focus on the positive things. I, again, I feel so grateful for what I have because I see so much of people that, that are suffering. I, I just, 
am very grateful. Well, we're grateful to have you today as our well, guest. Thank you. thank you for joining us. If you'd like to find out more about our prosecuting attorney's office and other programs we're working on, visit www.kingcounty.gov. I'm Dan Satterberg. Thanks for joining us.